Aplastic anemia is a bone marrow failure syndrome, and it's caused when, for a variety of reasons, the bone marrow stem cells disappear. And this can be caused by toxins or radiation, but more commonly it's caused by the body's own immune system turning against the bone marrow stem cells so that they're destroyed and disappear. The outcome is the bone marrow is empty and cannot make sufficient blood cells to keep the person healthy. My name is Bob. My daughter had aplastic anemia. Hi, my name's Leah, and my daughter, Curly, um, is a patient with aplastic anemia. In 2007, she had a bone marrow transplant, and my son, Tyler, who was seven years old at the time, was the uh, donor. Right now, she's uh, heading towards her second bone marrow transplant, so hopefully it'll be as successful as the first one. Myelodysplastic syndrome, or MDS, is another type of bone marrow failure syndrome. Unlike aplastic anemia, where the stem cells are simply missing, what happens in MDS is that the stem cells are present, but they're defective, and so they're unable to make enough blood cells to supply the patient's needs. My name is Gwen. I'm from Halifax, Nova Scotia. And three and a half years ago, in 2007, I was diagnosed with myelodysplasia. One particularly troublesome aspect of myelodysplastic syndrome is that there's a very highly increased chance of developing acute leukemia, which is a cancer of the bone marrow. And this happens in about, a, in about one third of patients with myelodysplastic syndrome. My name is Robert. I had MDS. I had a bone marrow transplant and now I don't have MDS. PNH is paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria. And this is an extremely rare condition in which a genetic mutation that occurs within the bone marrow stem cells results in the stem cells giving rise to very defective red blood cells. And these red blood cells in PNH have the feature of being extremely fragile so that even the body's own defense system that protects the body from infection has the effect of destroying red blood cells. And for this reason, uh, a person's red blood cells who has PNH won't last very long and they'll get destroyed. They'll explode in the bloodstream. This causes all kinds of problems. Not only does it re result in a reduction in the red blood cells, which is anemia, but also the release of the contents of the red blood cells into the bloodstream can cause damage to blood vessels, to the kidneys, and can result in the formation of blood clots that can be really life-threatening. Well, I think that um, patients uh, who are faced with these conditions have uh, several phases that they go through in terms of um, learning about the diagnosis and uh, understanding the, the diagnosis and what, and what the implications are. Hi, my name is Cecile and uh, I was diagnosed with uh, aplastic anemia and then myelodysplasia in 2006. They are diseases that have a variety of um, treatments and symptom, symptom control issues and lifespans. The treatments for aplastic anemia are directed at the causes, uh, particularly in cases where the disease is caused by the immune system. And so commonly we treat aplastic anemia with very strong drugs that suppress the immune system and block its effect on the stem cells. My name is Janice. Um, I was diagnosed with aplastic anemia six years ago. Aplastic anemia, which is essentially an immune-driven attack on the bone marrow, is best treated by immune uh, therapies. We have antithymocyte globulin, which destroys T lymphocytes, and in conjunction with cyclophosphamide and prednisone is very effective in about 70% of cases. There are newer immune therapies like CAMPATH, which is an engineered antibody to lymphocytes that seems to, seems to have some promise as well in treatment of aplastic anemia. In certain cases, particularly in very young patients, it's useful to uh, apply a treatment called bone marrow transplantation in which normal healthy bone marrow stem cells from a healthy donor are transferred to the patient to replace that patient's missing stem cells. Hi, my name is Tyler. My sister had aplastic anemia 
and I gave her my bone marrow. Aplastic anemia is a disease that affects all ages. And so this is a bone marrow failure syndrome that we see pretty commonly in, in very young patients, in children. Why are we seeing these bone marrow failure problems more commonly in children? And I think probably the most, most likely reason is that we're getting better at diagnosing them. I think they're very, they're very rare disorders and you need to have special tests and special genetic tests to, to make the diagnosis. And in the past, even five years ago, we couldn't do that testing. Hi, my name's Doug. Uh, my connection with uh, AMAC is my daughter, four years ago, uh, contracted uh, aplastic anemia. She was uh, 18 years old at the time. Uh, she was in the hospital for six months and unfortunately uh, passed away as a result of uh, complications. The group at the Hospital for Sick Children with Dr. Uh, Dror is doing an excellent job. They're world leaders, quite frankly, in, in making the diagnosis of these disorders. My name is Louise. My daughter is named Josie. And in 2006, she was uh, diagnosed aplastic anemia. And now she is in remission. The key things we see with, with children who are presenting with marrow failure problems is that they tend to present with um, bleeding problems. So from their low platelet count, they'll get bruises, so they'll, very easy bruising, and usually it's a big change. They haven't had bruising problems and all of a sudden they start having bruises, and then they'll get little red spots like little freckles that show up all of a sudden when, again, they haven't had these problems, uh, typically in areas um, around the belt line or where there's sort of a stress, you'll see little red spots. Other things that can happen, you can have nosebleeds, you can have bleeding when you go for, for pee or in a bowel movement. Hi, my name's Dennis. Um, this past June, my three-year-old son, Nicholas, was diagnosed with aplastic anemia. The last thing would be recurrent infections. So they have bad, unexplained infections, um, with really no good reason why they're having these these repeated infections. Hi, my name is Carly, and um, I had I had a plus anemia. Myelodysplastic syndrome is not a single disease. In fact, it's a group of closely related diseases, and so there's no one single approach to treatment. It depends on exactly the type of myelodysplastic syndrome that the patient has, uh, and that determines what the best treatment will be. I am Jacqueline. I have been affected by MDS and AML through my late husband. I lost the love of my life, my husband Desmond, to both diseases. Real strides have been made in the treatment of myelodysplastic syndrome, and here we have a number of new agents. Some of the more significant of these agents include lenalidomide, or Revlimid, which in patients with 5Q- syndrome brings about transfusion independence, which can last for many years. Hello, I'm Pam. Um, I suffer from myelodysplastic syndrome. I was diagnosed in 2000. In patients with higher risk diseases, those patients who are at serious risk of dying from their disease within a year, treatments like azacitidine and dicitabine are very effective, and particularly azacitidine is prolonging lives, reducing transfusion dependence, and delaying progression to more aggressive disease. Je m'appelle Yvette et j'ai myelodysplasie depuis 2006. For myelodysplastic syndrome that's more aggressive, the treatments are correspondingly more aggressive. Uh, in these cases, bone marrow transplantation is often an option that we consider. Also, there's a very new drug called Videza that's come onto the market in Canada only in the past year, and this has proved to be extremely effective in patients with aggressive, high-risk myelodysplastic syndrome. Hi, my name is Rola, and uh, my sister, Rana, was diagnosed with MDS back in 2000, and I was the bone marrow donor for her. She is now cured. She's in her third year of college, and she's doing very well. And when I was uh, the donor, I was only 13. So if I can do it, if a 13-year-old can do it, then uh, I'm pretty sure anyone can. So uh, go out there and sign up for you know, the Unrelated Bone Marrow Registry and uh, save a life. Until quite recently, we've had no satisfactory treatments for PNH. A small number of patients have been able to benefit from bone marrow stem cell transplantation. But other than that, we've had to rely on highly imperfect treatments. Typically, we've given patients prednisone, which is a type of steroid drug, 
that helps the red cells survive in the bloodstream a little bit longer. The problem with prednisone is it has many terrible side effects and it's really a very difficult drug to have to take for the long term. PNH, the development of Soliris or Eclusimab, which blocks the action of the immune system against the patient's own red blood cells, has really changed things for these patients. Although it's a rare disease and not terribly well studied, we know that eclusimab can reduce or even eliminate the need for transfusion, as well as other serious side effects like blood clotting. Patients who are on eclusimab generally feel much better while they're taking the drug. Ten years ago, if you had aplastic anemia, uh, you might be lucky enough to respond to immunosuppressive therapy with antithymocyte globulin and cyclosporin. But if you weren't, and if you didn't happen to have a very well-matched brother or sister with a very similar tissue type, then you were effectively out of luck. There was no treatment that could help you. Hi, my name is Susan. I was diagnosed with aplastic anemia six years ago. Nowadays, with the advances in bone marrow uh, tissue typing, particularly involving unrelated donors, almost everyone with aplastic anemia is likely to have the opportunity to undergo a bone marrow transplant which can cure the disease. Hi, my name is Linda. My son is Carter and he's 16 years old and he has aplastic anemia. For myelodysplastic syndrome, 10 years ago, we had only bone marrow transplantation uh, or palliative care. My name is Stan and uh, I was diagnosed with myelodysplasia or myelodysplastic syndromes um, nine years ago and at the time of diagnosis the disease was in its advanced stages and uh, I required a bone marrow transplant. Because most patients with myelodysplastic syndrome are over the age of 70, that means automatically they're eligible only for palliative treatment, which is an enormously unsatisfactory situation. Nowadays, in my clinic, I can find an appropriate active treatment for almost all of my patients, which is a huge, huge improvement. I'm Patty, and I'm the wife and caregiver of uh, a man who had a successful stem cell transplant nine years ago. For PNH, 10 years ago we had treatment with corticosteroids like prednisone and blood transfusion only, neither of which is a satisfactory treatment. Nowadays we have a brilliantly designed molecularly targeted therapy, eculizumab, which absolutely works in nearly 100 percent of patients. So things have changed enormously in all three of these diseases uh, in a way that's tremendously exciting both for patients and also for physicians. I found the Aplastic Anemia and Myelodysplasia Association of Canada, a support group which helps to educate people on the disease. And the more you learn, the more you understand it's not that frightening. It's extremely helpful, and I've seen this time and time again with my patients, it's extremely helpful for them to find someone, an ordinary person like themselves, who's been through it, who, who knows what these words mean, who can explain what's going to happen. AMAC provides tremendous support and education to individuals and their family members as they're going through the diagnosis and treatment, so they're not alone in their journey. We have uh, chapters across the country in BC, Alberta, Ontario, and the Atlantic provinces. We also have a board of directors that represents, that includes people from across the country, and as well a medical and scientific advisory committee of fantastic physicians from across the country that are interested in these rare blood disorders. The Aplastic Anemia and Myelodysplasia Association provides this basic human contact and a wealth of extremely helpful and useful information. It, in my experience, it's made an enormous difference to many of my patients. My name's Stacy. I have aplastic anemia. I was diagnosed about a year ago. Um, I went under some treatment uh, in November 2009, and uh, it was a little rough at first, but uh, I'm coping with the disease now and living a pretty normal life. I'm doing all the activities I used to do, like running, uh, biking, volleyball, ultimate frisbee. Um, so I'm not really letting this
disease stopped me at all. <laughs>